Okay, I promise you. And then um, we'll be thanks. next to me. Uh, I think that in, in, in some ways, uh, some of the people participating in that behavior probably thought it was a, tri you know, there was some sense of tribal justice being applied, even if it was tribal, but that some of the people experienced it as a righteous act, and that it's therein lies the part of the problem of what, you know, we're dealing with. That some of the people going there believe that are motivated the same way people went to fight in the Spanish Civil War. I mean, that they were doing something that was good, you know, good for themselves, good for the world, good for the future, and that they were sacrificing their lives for a worthy cause. So the fact that we consider that, you know, unworthy or, uh, you know, terrorist or label it as, you know, criminal or whatever it is, I mean, that's our label. The, the, the point of what drives the organization is how the people who are being recruited to join it see it. And as long as they're seeing that or any of the other organizations that have arisen of that nature, you know, in other words, not necessarily friendly to the US or hostile or somewhat or fascistic as regarding the population, there is that um, requirement or feeling for the US that we want to be good. That, and we have the feeling that we need to lead the world. I mean, this is, you know, we weren't elected to lead the world, but we have the feeling that we need to lead the world, so we need to do something, you know, to in make an intervention. It's our duty to make an intervention as Americans, wherever. Uh, there's a problem. Last, one last point, and, and, and that's to simply, you know, agree and reinforce what you were saying. And the problem in all that, to me, goes back to the Second World War, and it's that we have ignored the rise of fascism in the past to our cost and to our regret. So there have been times, not just then, but Rwanda, other places, where one felt that, yes, we should have intervened, and we should have intervened earlier, and intervening would have worked. And the problem is distinguishing those damn things that we can see clearly in retrospect. Yeah, we could have intervened there and it would have worked, and those other ones that are just a morass and a quagmire, and whatever we did, it was wrong. Intervening was wrong in one way, not intervening was wrong in another way. And I think it's a huge challenge. Now I don't I don't you know I don't take the understanding of lightly, but I don't think that the solution is, you know, go go, don't go is one that one can take lightly either. It is it is a it's a difficult issue. And I and I have a wonderful topic for debate here as well. Yeah, just I'd I'd like to um, add a comment. You say Americans want to do good, all the things you said. Americans say, all right. Well some of them. No, sure, but I would, I would say, are there not a lot of people in the world who want America to lead, who say, in the end, America's the least bad big country, the least bad superpower in Cold War times. Surprising people, surprising governments are very happy to have the Americans around in certain situations. For example, in East Asia, China, during the whole even not so much today, but for for a decade, Chinese were very happy to have you know the American Navy in the East China Sea because the American Navy held the Japanese down. The American Navy uh, kept the sea lanes free for trade. You know, people need to remember these basic things also. Uh, in addition, uh, governments. Elites will say one thing in public and another thing in private. So I would not discount the extent to which people and governments elsewhere in the world um, uh, desire American influence in their region or in their country, even though uh, they may not want to say it publicly. Mm.